Oh, it's recording. What's going on, guys? It's Danny here, and this is gonna be a 2.1k average MMR commentary. Um, let's go with the draft first, because it's Im remember that it's an important part of the game. Um, so, the draft first pick was actually a random Sven. Um, if you random maybe do it as soon as the game starts okay because this guy randomed at the end of the time that he had left to pick so he didn't even have time to repick so what if you cannot play the hero that you randomed what if you don't want to play the hero that you well you can swap with someone but what if your teammates don't want to swap you um, always <laughs> try to random earlier so you have time to re-random because Sven um, he he randomed right he has to play it no matter what you have to deal with it and play it but Sven is a carry hero that I would not recommend first picking unless you random it because Sven can easily get countered and kited in fights it's just not the best first pick Bristleback is the first pick for the Radiant team I do not recommend first picking Bristleback neither because um, Bristleback can be countered as well by a strong duo lane. Bristleback is an offlane hero, right? If you play him on the offlane, you will have to ask one of your teammates to duo lane with you, to be honest. Because if you go to the solo offlane and you play against the duo lane, one support and one carry, and they harass you, and you stay under leveled and under farmed, trust me, you will be a useless Bristleback for the entire game if you do not have a good start. Now, I have seen because of that reason, I have seen people play safe lane bristleback carry or mid lane bristleback. But if you want duo lane, that's usually an off lane hero, right? If so, if you want off lane, you will have to do a duo lane with some of your teammates and make sure that you get something in the beginning of the game. It's very important that you have a good early game with bristleback. Also, um, heroes that are good at making bristleback face them are good against them like for example legion commander when you duel him he has to face you right or axe when you call bristleback he has to face you to attack you um, otherwise bristleback would like to you to hit him in the back because he reduces the damage from his passive skill and also you make more of his quill spray proc um, the second pick for the Dire team is a Lion. A Lion is actually the best first or second pick. It's a support hero. I already mentioned that those are the best to pick first. Support heroes or strongest heroes of the patch that you better have them. Otherwise, if the enemy has them, they will win the game or they will have more chances of winning the game because stronger hero. Um, <laughs> they are that, that actually matters a lot. In in my games nowadays and like 5.5k average, uh, the first pick is a big fight for the Doom. Like the team that picks Doom, the opposite team already is has given up, you know, yeah, since the picks. Us. But anyway, um, Lion has two disables and a very good nuke in the early game as soon as he hits level 6 he offers a 600 damage nuke so lion is actually the perfect first or second pick and after the first or second pick it's about what do you need you can still wait f for heroes to not get countered but it's more of what do you need so what we are seeing right now for the first three picks is Lion has two disables, Sven has a stun, so that's a disable as well. Necrofoe's ultimate is a disable, um, very short disable, it's not meant to be a disable. It could be used sometimes only as a, as a disable, but very rarely. Usually what you want to do with it, the, the perfect situation for you would be to kill someone with it, because you increase his respawning timer. Um, in the Radiant team we have two stuns already with the Wraith King stun, Tide Hunter ultimate is a AoE stun and Bristleback is a tanky hero so we have three tanky heroes and two stuns and what they would need they also have uh, three melee heroes keep that in mind as well that that matters as well um, so the the two other picks would be nice if they are ranged heroes it's very good to have a 
good balance of ranged as well as melee heroes. It's important to have both. It's important to have disables in your team. So far, both teams have pretty good disables, I would say. Ember Spirit is actually very, very good fourth pick. If you pick it first, you can get countered easily by heroes that have silence, so you can't Lina. escape with the fire remnant, and you will be forced to buy a BKB or a Lincoln so you don't get uh, silenced. And Ember Spirit, yeah, Lincoln's is not bad, but it would be so much better getting other items first uh, to deal a lot more damage. So, PL is the last pick for the Dire. I believe PL is the counter to the Wraith King because um, he was picked after the Wraith King pick. And you guys know PL can counter Wraith King with a Diffusal Blade. All the illusions that PL creates. PL is a hero about illusions. Like, that's all he does. He creates illusions and he, he kills you with the illusions. The real hero deals tons of damage as well, but PL is a hero about illusions. So, all the illusions with Diffusal Blade, Burning Wraith King's mana. Wraith King will have a hard time this game. Also, they have a Lion, so the mana burn... Um, the mana burn will be something that matters as, as well. Um, Bristleback, Ember, Phantom Lancer... Okay, so let me pause for a second here. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but everyone from the Radiant team has already skilled. Um, usually I would say you don't skill until you need it. Okay, that's really recommended. Do not skill until you need it. For example, the Ember Spirit hasn't skilled yet. Um, PL skilled. Necrophose hasn't skill yet, skilled yet. Don't skill until you need it. Because... On Wraith King, there are exceptions like Wraith King. Like, obviously, you're going to skill the stun. What else can you steal? None of the auras is going to help so much on level 1. So, on Wraith King, yeah, you will skill the stun for sure. So, maybe you can skill it as soon as the game starts. But, on Legion Commander, you might need the the AoE nuke, or maybe he's planning to go jungle, so Moment of Courage is the best thing you can skill for the jungle. Um, Bristleback with quill, quill Spray. That's not bad, but sometimes you could need the the, the passive one. Um, PL, Spirit Lens, is good if you know you're going to be going offensive on the enemy. But what if you need something defensive? Doppelganger can definitely save your life sometimes. You can dodge the Wraith King stun with Doppelganger. You can do so much with it. Um, Ember Spirit could skill Searing Chains for level 1 kill. Or could skill Flame Guard as well. He has in his team a Lion that already offers a Disable, so he could skill the Flame Guard. Flame Guard gets removed really fast by um, magical damage on level 1. Only 50 magical damage is enough to remove the Flame Guard. Tidehunter is definitely a hero that you should wait until you skill. Gush is what you should skill on level maybe 4. Not one, definitely not one. Anchor Smash, when you go for the rune and you are starting a rune fight, Anchor Smash is going to reduce the damage of the enemies by a lot. And you will be able to, to win that rune fight a lot easier with Anchor Smash. This is a big mistake right here, skilling the gush. Um, let me see what else. Lina, Lina, maybe stun is the best thing you can skill. It's slightly less damage than the first spell but it's a 1.6 second stun which means a lot on level 1 stun on Lina is extremely good if you are competing for the rune um, when you look at the game timer that's something extremely important that's a big tip for every hero with a stun the stuns can actually help you secure the rune and the rune is totally worth it to use mana on the enemy to stun them because the rune is half level 1, or half level 2, whatever, 
um, and it's 100 gold. So Lina, for example, this is an AoE stun, right? So if you're standing on top of the rune, you plus one or two teammates, and you have two or three enemies um, standing on top of the rune, and everyone is spamming the right-click button to take the rune at minute zero when the rune spawns, you can, when there is one second left for the game to start, you can look at the game timer right here, um, and you can stun them. Like, you stun them, and they are stunned, and you just secure the rune for your teammate or for yourself or whoever takes the rune. That's that's something really important. Um, Sven is exactly the same thing. Stormhammer on level 1. You AoE stun on the enemy, take the rune, it's totally worth it, it's a bounty rune, it's a half level 1, 100 gold, GG, well played. Necrophos? Well, if you go mid lane Necrophos, maybe Hardstopper Aura on level 1 is your choice because it's constantly um, debuff on the enemy mid laner and it's constant harassment but in this game I think Ember is going mid uh, not the Necrophos mm. and basically that's it um, Lion Earth Spike on level 1 I think Hex is better sometimes if you are lacking damage on level 1 um, Earth Spike has 80 damage, but as at the same time, it's only one second duration, while the Hexi 2.5 seconds duration. So it's so much better to have the Hex on level 1, actually, in almost every situation. And let's get the game going. Let me check the starting builds real quick as well. Um, I'm sorry for the pause. I hope these pauses are helping you guys. I think the information I'm giving you is pretty useful. I hope so. Um, Legion Commander on level 1 has, um, I mean, starting item build, not level 1. Uh, starting item build is Stout Shield, Quilling Blade, Tango, Branch. If you're going to be jungling, this is the perfect jungling starting build. If you're going to be safe lane, I would prefer having um, one more regeneration item instead of the Quilling Blade. Remember that you can buy the Quilling Blade from the side shop. You're going to be laning here anyway, so the side shop is right here. As soon as you get enough gold for the Quilling Blade, you can purchase it from there. Um, Tidehunter started with Soul Ring Recipe and Ring of Regen. This is very wrong. You don't have any HP Regen. Two Regen per second from the ring is not enough for you to stay in the lane for a long time. You should not s really start with a recipe. Um, the enemy should immediately realize that and put tons of harassments on the tide and maybe even kill him on level 1 because he didn't skill Anchor Smash and there is no magic reduction and Gush on level 1 does nothing basically. It slows for 3 seconds but who cares. Um, Wraith King, Quilling Blade, Stout Shield, Tango, it's the same thing I said for Legion Commander. I would prefer having one more regeneration item like extra an extra set of tangos or one healing self instead of the quilling blade looks like he's going off lane same story like the safe lane you have the st uh, the side shop right here and you are laning right here so you can buy your quilling blade from the side shop as soon as you get enough gold from it for it and that would be after last hitting two or three creeps it's not that much actually um sven sven actually has the perfect item build sven was a random so he has tons of gold to work with um, as a random hero. Tango, Mango, Healing Self, Stout Shield, Quelling Blade. This is actually the best starting item build ever for a Sven. Um, Necrofall starting with Headdress. It's kind of the same story like the Tidehunter. You would like to have some stats as well because look at this, it's only 48 damage. I don't know what kind of Necrophos is this, maybe in this game he will be forced to play as a support, not really as a carry or a core hero, because they have four core heroes, and yeah, Lion is starting with the Ring of Region, god, these people like the Ring of Region a lot, I don't know why, it's only three sec, uh, it's only, only two HP Region per second, it's not impressive, it's not actually impressive at all. It's 350 gold cost. 
that's a huge amount of gold, 350 as a starting item should not be spent. Later on if you want it, if it's a part of an item that you are going to finish later, like for example uh, Vladimir's or a mechanism, you can buy it from the side shop as well, just like the quilling blade. Instead of the ring of region you can have two mangoes, which is less gold, two mangoes is 240 gold, not 350, and you can have a 300 mana region as well as a 2 HP region per second. Um, at the same time, Lion does not really need mana region because he has the mana drain. If you cannot mana drain a hero, you can go to the ranged creep. Remember that the ranged creep has a uh, mana, the melee creeps do not, but the ranged creep has mana, so you can go and drain that one and get some mana. Um, Ember Spirit with poor man shield and tango is actually the perfect starting item build, I would say. Um, the, the next thing he buys will be a bottle. Um, Ember Spirit has very low armor, he has only one on level one, so any uh, damage block items like power, sh uh, power, poor man shield or stout shield would be perfect as a starting build items. And he has one set of tangos. That this is actually perfect. The the perfect starting build. PL starting build is okay as well. This is actually really good build. The ring of protection is really smart. Three armor. If you see that you are facing two enemies on the on your lane and they are harassing you a lot from the side shop you can buy a stout shield as well and block some damage early on in the game um, and basically that's it let's let's go with the game alright let's go so uh, who is going where ember spirit is going middle right PL is going top Sven seems to be going towards the bottom lane, but he changed his mind. Uh, Lion has to be a support. I don't know where he's going. Uh, Bristleback is going to be safe laning. Oh, wait a second. I, I didn't notice this guy's starting item build. Don't, don't do this, okay? Don't buy two stout shields. One is enough. Um... Stout shields, okay, two stout shields do stack, but the only thing st that stacks is the, the block chance. It's not the damage. And the block chance is not really double. It's not 100%. It's about 70%, I believe. It's not really doubled. And the melee damage block is still 16, no matter if you have two stout shields or three or four or whatever. You can have 6 stout shields and still have the same 16 damage block, okay? Do not buy a second stout shield, one is completely enough for you. You can buy a mango instead. It's, uh, it's um, you know, 1 region per second and mana, mana instant 150 mana when you use the mango, so it's going to be so much better than a stout shield. Also, the Ring of Protection is 200 gold cost as well. You can buy a Ring of Protection in, uh, instead of a second Stout Shield. Um, and you're going to get armor from it. So now, Bristleback... Is he going to die? They have no reason to not chase him right now, okay? As you guys can see, there are three people on the top rune. Lina, Wraith King and Tidehunter. And there is no reason to not chase the Bristleback. Sven realized that, but Lion and Ember didn't go. That's something very important to keep in mind. Like, look at your minimap and see how many of the enemy heroes are on the other rune, okay? In this rune, we clearly saw that there are three people top, and Bristleback and Legion are alone bottom. And... That definitely should have been a kill on the Bristleback. That was the first blood right there. If only Lion and Ember chased after him. That was the first blood. So now with the two stout shields, I don't know what he is going to do with them. He is playing uh, solo bottom lane. So this is this is 
this is the bottom lane, this is the short lane, the safe lane for the Radiant team, right? But it's a 1v2, so it's still something like an off lane. This is not really a safe lane, this is an off lane still. It's just a different lane. And... He has no passive on level 1. Um, when you play against a Bristleback, you should be watching at the Quill Sprays, okay? Keep in... Uh, keep an eye on the quillings, all the quill sprays. Do not let uh, Bristleback stack more than two quill sprays at the same time on you, because that's going to hurt a lot. Do not let him stack more than two or three. And what do you mean AC? I mean LC is AFK. The Legion Commander is jungling. He is not really AFK. Maybe he's expecting the Legion Commander to support his lane or to duo lane with him I think it's much better like this um, to go Legion Legion jungle so he can farm and Bristleback stay here and get farm under the tower like right now um, I don't know why didn't he last hit that creep that in this creep as well should have been a last hit as well but anyway um, just make sure you're last hitting your creeps guys the creeps that come to your lane um, Legion Commander, meanwhile, as a jungler, it's important to check the runes. For example, right now, he's going to get the double damage, and that's going to speed up his jungling, and that's going to help a lot. You will be able to kill creeps a lot faster, so that helps. Um, eat a tango right now, and press the attack on yourself would be good as well. Nice. Double damage, easy rune, easy life, easy jungle. Lina is going for the top rune. Even if you don't have a bottle, it's still worth it to go for the rune. Um, Lina did the right thing. She has a bottle coming. Um, I have already mentioned this before when I saw a uh, Queen of Pain middle lane with uh, clarity potions. You don't need to start with clarities. You will be getting a bottle anyway, and you will see that you won't use your clarities at all. You will have the bottle. And Bristleback is... No, run! Oh, run! Oh, my God. Oh, God. He died there. That's the first blood. The first blood for Lion. I actually like it when supports get the first blood because... Supports don't get much farm. Like, the carry is sitting on the lane last hitting creeps, right? The support is trying to harass. And... Just harass and secure that the carry gets farm while he's not farming at all so having the first blood is really useful you can purchase your boots of speed very early into the game and have movement speed advantage over the enemy offlaner and that will help you at harassing him and it's just really nice and you can buy more wards in the early game as well it's it's okay when supports get the first blood it doesn't have to be everything for the carry. Not every game at least. Um, Ember has his bottle already. Lina has his bottle. Uh, Lina is maxing the Dragon Slave. That's the best thing you can max on Lina. It's a very good nuke. Level 1 stun is enough. Um, if you max the stun, it's going to increase the stun duration. But the Lina stun is very easy to predict because you see the the cast animation on the hero the Lina stun is very easy to dodge so it's not really worth it to max the stun because you never know if you're going to hit it for sure it's m it's the best thing is to max the dragon slave ember spirit um, 2 1 2 build I am not a very good ember spirit player but I agree with this build um, the the duration on the searing chase I increased by one second on level 2 the duration goes up to 2 seconds on level 1 it's only 1 second and 1 second is, is nothing against Alina um, Lina will have enough damage to break your flame guard every time um, this is what works against Ember Spirit heroes that can break the flame guard in the early game like Lina is the perfect example and right now he's going for the top invisibility rune Ember prefers to stay on the on the lane and get some farm. Mm. What Lina could have done before going for the rune is nuke the creep wave with Dragon Slave. 
because you don't want to go for the rune and leave the creep wave on the mid lane um, and miss a lot of experience and possible last hits as well. Whoa, going aggressive right here under the tower. The flame guard is still not removed. Now it's removed, and this is going to be a dead ember spirit. But it's a good attempt, though. It's it's a good attempt. You. You should not be afraid to do this kind of attempts to kills. You did pretty well with this attempt. Um, could have been better, could have dodged the stun. If you dodged the stun, that would have been a kill on Lina, but it's still okay. Once again, keep in mind that Lina is a good, good hero against the Ember Spirit. She can remove the Flame Guard. Flame Guard is the biggest... Um, damage source for Ember in the in the early game. Flame Guard deals so much more damage than your right clicks. So it's much better if you can have the Flame Guard on as much as possible. But against Alina, she has magical damage and he and she will remove your fang, uh, your Vanguard your Flame Flame Guard she will remove it very easily. Um right now what the Sven and Lion are missing. This means, oh my god, this guy hasn't skilled the Hex a single time. I already mentioned, guys, Hex is a 2.5 second duration disable. It's extremely good. It's probably the best spell on Lion. You don't really have to max it, but at least skill it on level 1 or 2. And... Maxing the mana drain is good against the Wraith King, but you are not really laning against the Wraith King. If you max mana drain on Lion, you have to constantly go after the Wraith King. Every time he has his ultimate off cooldown, you have to go for him and drain his mana and make sure that he doesn't get his ultimate off. He dies without respawning from the reincarnation. Um, for, for this game... Um, the perfect build for Lion would be to max the stun, one point of Hex and one point of Mana Drain, that's completely enough. Um, now they are ganking the bottom lane and the, the, the jungle, excuse me. The jungle gank is extremely good. It's really good that you contest the enemy's jungler, if there is any. Right now, see, Lion has, uh, I mean the Legion has uh, chances of escaping because Lion does not have a Hex, and that's a Mango used by the Sven. You just have to right-click him. Okay, one more right-click by the Lion was enough. So at the end of the day, that was a kill on the Legion Commander. It would have been so much better if Lina came to contest and help the Legion Commander. But as you can see, meanwhile, Lina ganked the top lane. And that was a successful gank because that was one kill on the Necrofoss. It's pretty good. Very good gank by the Lina. Invisibility rune. Invisibility rune should have should have seen it coming because both teams had a warrant here. And by the way, um, in this situation, I cannot see the team chat of the Radiant team, but when you are playing the bristle back in this game right and you see both the enemy heroes missing from your lane it's extremely obvious it's the most obvious thing in the world that they are ganking they are ganking either the middle lane Lina or the jungling legion and that was a very very easy kill for Ember I believe that was very good combination of damage from the remnant um, Searing Chains, damage, Flame Guard, damage. Flame Guard is the best thing you can max on Ember Spirit. I can tell you that for sure because on level 4 it's 500 um, magical damage absorption. Basically, it requires 500 magical damage to break the Flame Guard. And Lina has to use the ultimate or something if she doesn't want to die. Um... <laughs> the way you play against the Ember as Alina in the beginning of the game is very aggressive play in general because remember early on you can cancel that you can cancel that flame guard very easily 
now when it's a level 4 flame guard it's not that easy to cancel it because you need 500 damage that's a lot of magical damage and not every hero offers that much um, okay drain bristleback's mana he doesn't have any more mana for quill sprays or goose he can't do anything without mana it's pretty good it's it's okay you drain his mana and he can't do anything it's not bad maxing maxing la mana drain on lion it's not the worst thing ever what's the worst right now is that he hasn't skilled the hex a single time guys it's a 2.5 second duration disable always kill the hex okay the at least um one point is enough not at least i didn't mean to say at least one point in the early game is enough and after you have maxed your earth spike after that you max the mana drain and then you can max the hex um ember spirit with face boots going for the ring of aquila classic build for ember spirit um ring of aquila very early and very useful stats um top lane though is Necrofoes, nice stun by the Lina, and that's a double kill for Wraith King. The Legion Commander tip it top, but it was kinda late. Now, oh my god, Lion, you are not supposed to run into five heroes, Lion, because you just fed uh, a kill and a damage dual win for the Legion Commander. Literally, what Lion did is run into four heroes. You are not supposed to do that. Don't. Don't just give the enemy free gold for nothing and free dual wins to the Legion Commander. Okay. Um, Ember Spirit is going to attempt a gank on the bottom lane. There is a Lina there. It's good that he's not going. Okay, he is going now. There is a Sven here. He has mana for a stun. And that might be a dead Bristleback because he doesn't realize that he can easily die. Ember Spirit's Flame Guard actually hurts so much. Um, I guess could have tried to go under the tower with a Remnant, but at the same time Lina has a stun, so if you get stunned, you are most likely going to die. Yeah, it's okay. You got the kill on the Bristle back, that's enough. It's alright. Um, PL classic PL build in the early game as well. Ring of Aquila is a very very useful early game item. Um, as you can see it gives you 9 damage, also gives you a lot of stats that will be very good for you in the early game. Very useful stats will help you survive sometimes. Just what stats do. Um, Lion is going from behind. He has a finger available, and that's a stun on Tide Hunter and the finger as well. Tide Hunter is dead. Now he has to be careful. The the Legion, the Legion could have dueled him under the tower, I think, because Lion started. Mm, yes, he did start getting tower auto attacks. This right here is when Legion should have dueled him or maybe he tried but he lost vision I think what happened right here when he stopped moving for one second is when he lost vision so maybe that happened but he should have dueled the lion if he could um, uh, that's very close it would have been he didn't even die wow and now Lina tp to the top lane did he tp to the top lane he tip it to the top lane then that's very nice. No, he didn't really. He just came came this way and there is a Wraith King there as well. Well, this is the dangerous part about diving the tier 1 tower like this. Um, the enemy heroes can come to you and react to the tower dive and they can kill you. That's a killing spree on the Wraith King. And Lion might die as well. I don't really know. That's an invisibility rune here. Lina couldn't get him. Stun didn't really hit. Legion commanders overwhelming odds didn't hit. There is the Ember Spirit right here. 
And that's going to be a double kill for Ember or I guess one kill for PL. Um, Wraith King is going to die. And this is exactly what I was talking about. Um, Lion with the max. Meanwhile, Ember did get the kill on Lina. That's very good. Um, Lion with the maxed mana drain, draining Wraith King's mana, as you can see the ultimate is not on cooldown, but he still died because he didn't have mana for it. In these situations, what you should buy on your Wraith King is a magic wand, and make sure you save your charges when you are about to die, you can use them, and if you... When you're about to die and you don't have mana for your ultimate, you use the charges and you will get enough. Unless your mana gets burned really fast, um, again, but if you wait until like the last second, until you have like one more auto attack to die, you use the magic wand and then you have to be very good at the timing. Um, Ember Spirit, oh man, you have walked into three heroes. That's a Legion Commander duel. <coughs> the Tide Hunter Ravage was used. Um, maybe you are thinking that's too much for one hero, right? Using a big ultimate like Ravage. Well, it's an Ember Spirit. Ember Spirit is a fat kill. He gave Legion 400, or it's more like Legion got 430 gold for killing him. And 14 minutes into the game, that's a lot. No matter who got the the kills from the Radiant team, doesn't matter if it was the Tide, the Legion or the Wraith King, it would have been totally worth it, the Ravage usage. If it was a Lion instead of a Ember Spirit, they wouldn't get that much gold from him. And also, I know there is... I know there is uh, action happening on the bottom lane and I will take a look at it and I don't know what the hell is going on right now. I just wanted to look at something. Um, Ember Spirit is walking to the bottom lane and there was a ward here. Maybe Necrofoss placed it after Ember died so yes, Ember did not have any vision here. He didn't know there are three heroes here so it's okay. If oh, it's okay if you don't have any vision and you don't see now Necrophos is going to place an ob usually placing an observer ward like this is not very nice because the enemy could have vision here and they do have vision here so now if the enemies the, the radiant supports are smart they will buy um, do they even have support heroes on radiant they don't really have a support hero man. Legion is jungling, Lina is mid, Tide Hunter is like farming a lot, Wraith King is a carry of course, Bristleback is a carry. Um, there is a stun on the Necrophos, no Ravage now, it was used before. So this is when Ember Spirit is like, okay, you have no Ravage now because you used it on me and now you cannot win a team fight. So that's alright. But... Again, using it for the Ember kill was worth it because Ember is a bad hero and he gives a lot of gold. Uh, finger on the Tide Hunter, Necrophos is gonna die as well. He managed to get his ultimate off before he died. Legion, that's a duel on the Lion. I would say that's a good target choice. Lion is a squishy hero. Unfortunately, he couldn't win the duel there. I think his teammates could have helped him more try to secure the dual win. Um, let's see what happened right here. Go hit the lion right now. Uh, not really. It was really close. But in general, when you see your legion duel some hero, you should always try to go and help him win the duel because it's uh, damage for the legion and it's totally worth it. And Legion doesn't really have to get the kill to win the duel. You can win the duel anyway. Uh, maybe the teammate is going to get the kill, but as soon as you win the duel, you are fine. Later on, Legion is a good counter to the Wraith, to the Ember Spirit, and the Phantom Lancer as well. If you get a Blink Dagger on Legion Commander, 
um, and you'll see Ember or PL. Like PL and Ember are heroes that usually can escape from the Legion, right? Ember can go back to a remnant when he sees he's about to get ganked. You can instantly react and go back to your remnant. Um, Phantom Lancer can instantly react and use a doppelganger to escape. But if you have a blink on Legion Commander and you are waiting in the trees and you see the Ember or the PL alone, you can just duel them. They don't really have the time to react. If you are really fast at blink duel, like it literally takes you one second. People people don't have much time to react. It's it's very hard to react. Blink duel and then your teammates join you and then that's the kill on one of them. And Ember went back to the remnant here. You don't wanna stay against the Wraith King and Lina. Um, Necrofoes just got the kill of Tidehunter. That was a kill with the ultimate, which is very good. And now that's uh, stun by Lina. Wraith King has his ultimate. He's gonna get his mana burned again, and he's going to die because no mana for ultimate. That is so bad. Definitely, guys, buy a uh, magic wand on Wraith King. Your ultimate should be should be used in every fight um, maybe you can carry a mango as well not only the magic wand because sometimes you won't have enough charges right not every single time your ultimate is ready you will have enough charges to use it sometimes you can carry a mango as you can see Wraith King has three slots in his inventory so I uh, carrying a mango is going to help it's instant 150 mana region uh, plus a bit of mana region from the um, magic wand that's enough for your ultimate Legion commander seems to be going for a shadow blade uh, shadow blade is also good it doesn't have to be only a blink shadow blade is good as well on the Legion commander um, people in in games in the pub games people don't don't buy um, detection very often so shadow blade I have heard saying pro players I mean I have heard pro players say that shadow blade is one of the best items in pub games unless it's like a very very high MMR game where everybody carries detection and that was a really really good ravage by the tide hunter it was a four man ravage uh, that's a double kill for Ember I mean sorry for Sven Lion escaping with low HP, PL escaping as well. So that's a 2 for 2 trade in this fight. Uh, the graph tells me that Radiant team Radiant got more gold from this. Um, the experience exchange was pretty much the same. I can put the net worth right now. Um, the, the first three heroes on the net worth are from the Dire team. Wraith King has his ultimate here. He is going to respawn now. And the Ember is going to get dueled. And that's good game well played. <laughs> yep. <laughs> GG well played. If. Yeah, if. If the Wraith King didn't have ultimate, that would have been totally worth it. Because that would have been a kill at least. And then without the help of the Wraith King. Um, Legion might have not been able to even win the duel. By the way, if I was the Legion in this game, even if I am jungling, I would definitely max my overwhelming odds because this is what works very well against PL. It's the best thing you can do against PL. You can max the overwhelming odds and you can kill all the illusions. As I already said in the beginning of the game, PL is a hero about illusions. And in the Radiant team, they don't really have a good AoE spell up Apart from the overwhelming odds, like Lina's stun is okay, but it can be juked very easily. Dragon Slave is a spell that you can use, but it's not going to be enough to kill all the illusions at the same time. Overwhelming odds deals huge damage on illusions. So now there is a fight here. Um, that crit though with the armlet 
Ember is trying to escape here. Duel on the Necropoles. I like what the Legion Commander just did. He was saving the duel until the Necro was half HP or until he was almost dead. You can do that on Legion. Oh, now he's the one gonna get ulted and he's dead for 75 seconds. Oh my god, that's a lot of death time. 75 seconds. That's what Necrofoss Ultimate does to you. It increases your respawn time by 30 seconds. If he didn't get killed by the Reaper's Scythe, it would have been around 40 seconds respawning time. And that's much shorter than 70. Radiance middle tower is under attack. That really means a lot, like, I don't know if uh, people are realizing, but killing people with Necrofoss ultimate actually means a lot. 30 seconds additional respawning time is so much in the mid game. Like, 10 minutes into the game being dead for 60 seconds is 60 seconds where you do nothing. You are not getting experience from any lane. You are not farming any creeps or anything like that. You are just dead for so long. 60 seconds instead of only 30 seconds. So, yes, sometimes you can use your Necrofoss ult as a disable to make sure you don't miss free kills. But in general, you should try to kill people with it so you add more respawning time. And at the same time, you get your Sadist from your ultimate. Um, the Sadist from the ultimate is so much more Radiance HP and mana regen than getting Sadist from creep kills. So that's good. Oh, now Ember Spirit. Let me see what happens. Let me see if that was the Legion Commander's Shadow Blade doing work or how exactly did the Ember die. Um, it's exactly the, the Legion. And he's going... Oh, that's... Yeah... He should have backed a little bit here, I guess. I think they did see the Legion going in this because there were teammates pinging on him. And going on the Ember, when you know there is a Invis Legion that's going to duel you, going on the Ember is not the best thing ever. But you know what? I don't know if he mean it or not, but meanwhile space was created while he was dying on the top lane the ember spirit bottom lane um, people people got a kill and now they got the tower as well this tower might get denied which is not good but still it's one tower taken and kills taken so ember spirit's death is not that bad wraith king's ultimate is up soon that's going to be actually a denied tower which is so unfortunate for the dire team a lion as well as necrofoss died so 23 minutes into the game 24 minutes into the game let's take a look at the item builds again um lina is still trying to make a yule scepter not having the yule scepter is really bad i think lina is just going to die here because he is extremely squishy and that's easy kill for ember Ember almost has a Battle Fury while Lina doesn't have even a Yule Scepter yet. And it hurts a lot. On Lina, what you would see a very high skill player do on Lina, unless it's a counter gank under the tower when the enemy is diving, they will prefer staying on the lane and farming as much as possible. First finish that Yule Scepter, so you can increase your killing potential by a lot. The Yule Scepter combo is extremely easy for Lina, and it's the most one of the most effective combos. Like all you have to do is Yule Scepter someone, and then press your stun, press your ultimate, and press your Q, and you got a kill on an enemy hero. It's very easy and it's very very effective. Okay, so make sure you finish that Yule Scepter before going into so many fights this Lina is being part of 10 kills out of 20 which is good team play right you assisted in kills for your team that's nice team play but
But at the same time, it's not nice for you because you don't have the Ewels. 25 minutes, no Ewel Scepter yet is really bad on Lina. You're supposed to have the Ewels at around 12 minutes or so. And then you start killing everybody anywhere on the map. Anyone that you see, the combo is very simple and very easy. Ewel Scepter stun old Q. Someone is dead. That's a dead hero. Phantom Lancer. Um, power Treads. Vladimir's uh, Yasha. And after that going for the Diffusal Blade. You guys probably have seen the high skilled PL. Like the high MMR PL players. Or the professional players in tournaments going Boots of Travel first. That's the best thing you can do on Ember. But if you are, if your MMR is around 2.1k, like the average in this game, it's 2.1k. Um, it's much better for you to get power treads because you won't really be able to use the boots of travel in the right way. Um, oh wow, that's actually the perfect. Did he just dodge Lina ultimate with the doppelganger? That was so good, actually. Damn, that was that was a good play right there. I don't know if he meant to do that, but anyway, <laughs> he probably did, right? That's a Ravage, that's a four-man Ravage. And Mechanism on Necrophos, helping with the heals. Raid King, he has no... He has ultimate up. Necrophos is out of mana. Tidehunter is getting focused as well. Lina doesn't do much at this point because she is extremely squishy. He missed the combo right here. He's gonna die. Um, I don't know if this is going to be a kill. This is a kill actually. And a dual win for Legion Commander. The Legion Commander is doing well actually in this game. Um, 76 dual... Uh, 76 damage from duels is not bad, but I don't really agree with the crystalis, the the Daedalus decision, because you don't need the crits much. You don't need to deal that much. You deal damage anyway. You deal a lot of damage anyway. Lion went for an Agonim Scepter first item. Uh, I don't like that a lot. That's not very good. Reduces the cooldown of the ultimate and increases the damage and it makes it a small AoE. But Blink Dagger is so much better. Blink Dagger should be your first item on Lion, okay? Blink Dagger or four Staff or both. At the same time, um, Blink Dagger or Force Staff is a must have on Lion. It will help you initiate on people so easily. It will help you get a good positioning in fights. And right now, he is, he is on the middle lane alone. That's just a, that's just a misplay right there. You should not be pushing the enemy's mid lane alone and he was not just pushing he was going aggressive on the bristleback when he was alone that's that's a lion that's a free guild for the uh, free kill for the enemy and legion commander got another free dual win he has a daedalus now yes he does deal tons of damage but you will see how he won't be able to deal damage because he's going to get disabled um Ember Spirit with Searing Chains, and Slade of Fist. Legion can get hit by the Searing Chains. Legion can get disabled by... Uh oh, they are going in! And that's a kill on the Necropos. And then the Legion just died and... Wraith King is gonna die as well. So this is a 1 for 2 trade. Now he has no ultimate on the Wraith King. That's another Lina ultimate dodge. 
damn Lina ultimate dodges. So good in this game. What the hell, man? BKB on Legion Commander would have been much better. Because there is uh, Necrofoss ultimate that you don't want to take the damage from it. Um, if you get a BKB and Necrofoss ults you, you will get disabled for a second and a half, I believe. One second and... Yeah, one second and a half, basically. Um, so you will get disabled by that, but if you are immune to magic, you will not take any damage from the Reaper's Scythe. Also, you are not taking damage from the Death Pulse and the Heartstopper Aura. You cannot get disabled by the Ember's Searing Chains. You cannot get disabled by Lion. He has two disables. Sven has a stun as well. And BKB is just so much better. BKB would have been five times better than Daedalus in this game. You don't need... You don't really need to deal huge amount of damage. Um, if you have the survivability, you will be able to deal a lot more damage in fights. Because all these dual damage wins are very nice. Yeah, you have 120 damage 30 minutes in, and that's very very good, but you guys will see when the huge team fights happen. Legion is gonna get disabled forever. He won't be able to hit anybody. Um, obviously, the, the dire team has to realize that. You have to realize that if the enemy's carries have magic immunity or not if they don't have and you can disable them then make sure you actually disable them so you can kill them very easily uh, phantom lancer did not get stunned now lina is most likely gonna die because lina is a squishy hero um lina gets healed by legion what a nice team player the legion and pl got on top of the cliff for some reason now I don't know if any, anybody knows that he is on top of the cliff. Probably not. He tip it back to base and Ember Spirit get back because he is playing against four people. He gets dueled now by the Legion. That's a crit and that's a dead Ember. A little bit... A little bit of uh, solo play I'm noticing in this game. A little bit. He is... Ember is not doing bad. 8 kills, 7 deaths, 8 assists. Not bad, but I'm noticing a little bit of solo play. Always solo split pushing while team is fighting. Always going for the kills alone. Getting picked off a lot by the Legion Commander because he's trying to push in an uh, aggressive position alone. Um, Legion Commander is more like, you know, Legion Commander could be even more solo player than Ember, but he's not really doing it. When he wins duels, it's he has teammates around him. That's something really cool to team play, right? Team play in Dota 2 is very good. Um, Lion, oh my god, don't tell me you're going for a mechanism. The Necrofoss already has Guardian Greaves, okay? You don't want to have two mechanisms or two Guardian Greaves or one mech and one Guardian Greave. You already have one of these heals. You will get, after he heals someone, you will get a debuff and... You won't be able to get any more heals for 40 seconds or so. When you get healed by Guardian Greaves once, you get a buff here, or a debuff more like. And that means you cannot get healed again. And that lion, lion is going to waste 2300 gold, which is the mechanism cost, right? May it's, yeah, 2300. Could have had a uh, blink dagger instead. Blink Dagger would have been so much better on the Lion. Blink Dagger should be your first item as a Lion. Um, what I meant to say when I said PL... If you have like the MMR of this game, like 2.1k or something... Um, 
I'm not sure if you will realize how the boots of travel should be used. I'm not sure if if people at this MMR will um, will understand what really power tread gives them. I mean, sorry, the boots of travel gives them, and what it actually gives them is uh, the mob this opportune this uh, chance or this ability more like to every 45 seconds 45 seconds is the cooldown of the boots of travel um, every 45 seconds is um, you can TP to lanes and split push basically that's what it allows you to do to split push lanes constantly and farm really fast and pressure lanes that's what the safe lane carry is supposed to do, right? Pressure lanes, force enemy heroes to TP to lanes and defend towers. And look at the Ember Spirit. That's why I said I'm noticing a bit of solo play. Right now, like, right now it could be these three heroes. Lion, Lion, uh... Lion, PL, and Necrofalls, you could blame them as well for being so deep when they are only 3 and Sven is farming bottom and Ember is farming jungle, but can't always flame the team, right? Can't always blame the team. And it's not that Ember is on... What Sven is doing on the bottom lane is he's defending against the Wraith King. Um, what Ember Spirit is doing in the jungle is farming, so... Right now, the Sven is doing okay because he's defending up the bottom lane. Legion, uh, the Wraith King is tipping bottom to fight. I mean, top to fight. But the Ember Spirit should not be in the jungle. He should be in the fight instead. That's why. That's why I said I'm noticing some solo play by him. The the Radiant team actually are team playing so well. They are team playing very well. Bristleback has a blade mail and Vanguard. Um, that was that was not good. Wraith King got his mana burned by the illusions, and they are pinging here. They know that PO is on top of the cliff, and now he just <laughs> the Wraith King blinked on top, and then PO got got back. See how Wraith King's mana gets burnt in every fight? It's very important to carry Magic Wand or maybe a Mango as well, so you can you can have enough mana for your stun. I mean for your ultimate, sorry. Um Tide Hunter didn't have Ultra Kill This when this man, this man is the true carry. After Tide Hunter is dead, the Radiant, the yeah, they should have just backed. When they should have realized that Wraith King is going back to base because he has no mana and no HP. And the Tide Hunter was already dead, and he has no Ravage. It was on cooldown. They should have just backed. Now they have to use buybacks if they have any. And Drum of Endurance after the Yule Scepter. 37 minutes into the game, Lina should have a lot more farm than this. That's my point. Oh, Ember Spirit going ham. This is a good moment to go ham because there are there are three heroes dead from the Radiant team. When there are three heroes dead from the Radiant team and you are pushing us five, like the Dire team in this case, it's a 5v2, right? So as soon as you see someone, you go on them like this Ember Spirit did. That was a good play to go on them right there. You Now Lina is dead, so now it's 5v4. You know, there is a Ravage, they ha oh, there is no Ravage actually. This cooldown is actually so long, I don't even know what's the cooldown. Ember, I mean the Legion Commander, with no BKB, won't be able to do anything. 
he's dead for 100 seconds. He does have a buyback available. He should use it right now since it's available. And I don't know why did he buy the Perseverance, but there is no need of... Uh, what's the Perseverance for? For, for uh, Lincoln Sphere? No need for a Lincoln Sphere. BKB is so much better. Um, Battle Fury. No need Battle Fury at this point. You don't need the splash damage or you don't... Battle Fury on Legion is very bad. Um, another thing you can make from Perseverance is um, a Refresher Orb. You don't need Refresher Orb on the Legion. Or maybe he wanted to make a Lotus Orb. Well, that's not bad. Lotus Orb is not bad. You can return Necrophos's um, Reaper Scythe. You can return Lion's Disables and Sven's Disables. Lotus Orb would have been a pretty decent choice actually in this game for the Legion. But he definitely needed a BKB. Lotus Orb, I'm saying Lotus Orb would have been a decent choice, but definitely instead of Daedalus, get that BKB going. Also, Blade Mail is one of the most important um, things for Legion Commander because when you duel someone, you are hitting him, but rem remember that he is also hitting you. So, when he hits you and you have Blade Mail on, you will be returning the damage. And in this game, is basically Dire having better late, I believe. The Sven is too fat. Sven did really well in this game. Ember Spirit did well as well. Uh, PL. PL is a PL, yeah. PL is strong as well. Like, keep in mind, those are 1 Sven, 2 Ember, and 3 Phantom Lancer. 3 hard carry heroes. While in the the Radiant team, there is no real hard carry except the Wraith King. Legion Commander as well, but Bristleback? Bristleback won't deal much, he will just get nuked really fast. And remember in the beginning of the video how I was, I was talking about uh, lead, um, Bristleback needs to have a good start, good farm in the beginning and good level progression, otherwise he will be useless? Well, this is exactly what happened in this game. In the beginning, he played bottom lane, but it was not really a safe lane. It was an off lane for him. And he was... He got shut down. He got shut down in the beginning, so... He couldn't do much in the entire game. Um, basically, that's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like on the video. That helps out a lot. If you are new to my channel, feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching. And I see you in the next video. Good luck and have fun playing Dota.